Hello, and welcome to your remote Friday edition of Freight Waves Now. I'm your host, Anthony Smith, and today we have Andrew Cox with us. He's going to give us a DHL supply chain pricing power index update. But first, we're going to go to Zach Shugrin with a carry update brought to you by PowerFleet. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to today's care update presented by PowerFleet. I'm Zach Strickland. Uh, let's dive right on into what's going on in the freight market. Uh, so we see tender rejection rates still relatively high, 22.38% right now. They are trending lower, uh, but very slowly lower. You see there uh, back around the Christmas and New Year's holiday period, we did drop rather dramatically. Uh, we hovered out for a minute and then continued back down again. Now over the past week, we have not fallen that far. So we're starting to see this floor form. And if you see uh, back last year in that pink line there, 2019 into 2020, we did find a floor uh, about this time last year. So tender rejection rates tend to not drop throughout the whole month. Now, 2018, 2019, we did continue to drop. Now we were coming down out of historical uh, highs that that market was very tight. Contracts got implemented, rates came back down. And that's, we do expect the similar thing to happen here over time in a much slower way uh, this year as tender rejection rates come down due to higher contracts uh, being implemented throughout the next couple of months. This is typically the period we see a lot of new contracts go into place, carrier acceptances will go up because they are getting more money uh, for hauling the the loads across the country. Now, a uh, big question is whether or not is, this is going to persist for a long period of time. Now, to do that, we're going to look at volumes, and this is our outbound tender volume index. Uh, you can see there is a, a bit of a new pattern emerging here that isn't in line with traditional uh, patterns that we've seen over the last couple of years. Uh, you see there is a slight uptick in our current tender volume index there in the blue line. Uh, versus the previous two years where we see a slow retraction of tender volumes overall. And that is a normal pattern for January as tender volumes do tend to slide uh, throughout January and February before a, a kind of a spring push in March uh, to end the quarter and of course warmer temperatures, uh, getting some of that seasonal freight out of out the door. So it is interesting to see that volumes are still climbing. We're, we're still quite high overall. We're about where we were when we were uh, right before Christmas in terms of overall volume. So we do think this is going to keep some additional pressure on the freight market that it's not necessarily accustomed to having. I mean, a 22% tender rejection rate, along with this high of a level of volume, uh, this, this isn't going away very quickly. Uh, so we can probably expect to see these conditions persist uh, throughout the next several weeks at least. Uh, looking at our weighted rejection index, combining that market share with tender rejection rate weekly change. Uh, we can see some of the volatile markets in the country to see where the most activity is occurring with rejections either going up or down. The red, of course, on the map indicates that those are the markets where we're seeing the biggest contractions or loosening, uh, the quickest loosening in the overall market. Uh, and you see Houston there with Dallas in the middle of the country. You see Harrisburg and that light kind of pinkish uh, red hue uh, still coming down out of the holidays. And what's more interesting to me in all this is that Ontario and Los Angeles market. This has been the market, this has been the region that's really been fueling the country with uh, a lot of the freight volumes that we see due to the huge amount of imports coming through that come across the country. Uh, however, we see tender rejection rates falling rapidly still uh, out of this market. This has been the hot spot of the United States here over the last few months. So let's take a quicker, a deeper dive into the Ontario market uh, real fast. And this is combining tender volumes with tender rejections. We see that those tender rejections all the way down to 14%. This time a month ago, we were up around 22%, 22.5%. So they've fallen very rapidly, uh, quicker than most of the country. Tender volumes, you see uh, that familiar pattern where tender volumes are actually coming up uh, again, that means that you know carriers are having an easier time covering these loads out of Los Angeles. Either they've gotten higher rates, or they've been able to uh, you know maintain their networks to get back into this market a little bit quicker. So here's one additional graphic to give a nice illustration of the type of freight that's moving out of Los Angeles right now. You can see way back in May, long haul volumes. That's our LOTVI really separating from the rest of the pack in terms of overall freight coming out of that market. Uh, you can see the short haul, mid haul, tweener, all that stuff, stuff that moves under 800 miles 
uh, really didn't nudge that much, but those long haul volumes really drove a lot of the tightness. And we can now start to see things coming back together. That long haul does not have the separation that it once had from all the rest of those volumes. So if you are operating out of Los Angeles now, you're having a little bit easier time covering because you're not going as far away from that market. Uh, and that is basically going to continue to have a loosening impact on that place. So if you are hauling out of Los Angeles, be prepared to haul a little bit shorter haul freight. And that'll do it for today's carrier update. The comprehensive logistics offerings from PowerFleet cover in-cab ELD, fleet management, trailer tracking, cargo monitoring, and tracking other assets such as chassis and intermodal containers. Power up your operations with PowerFleet. Now moving on to the DHL supply chain pricing power index update. I'm here with Andrew Cox. Andrew, what's the latest? Anthony, the pricing power index stayed at 70 this week. We were at 70 last week. We're staying there this week. Uh, the main points of emphasis are here that, as Zach mentioned, projections are sliding. They seemingly have found a, a slight support here at about 22%. Uh, they've slid down from that holiday level of nearly 30. Uh, but I, I want to say that that movement downward is not because a material capacity has been added. Rather, contract rates are being rebid up through this rebidding season, making carriers uh, less need less in need to reject freight. We saw that in the Ontario market. Zach just mentioned it. Uh, rejection rates are down to 14%, but volumes are still pushing up. So we could see some more pressure there. On the volume side, they remain fairly strong, uh, very strong. We have on a rejection adjusted basis, OTBI is up about 20% year over year. There's really no let up in sight. If you look at the West Coast, it is absolutely loaded up with freight for weeks, possibly even months. Uh, every Anchorage and port space in the San Pedro Bay is now filled up with ships. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the stimulus checks and its immediate impact on spending here in a moment as well. So, Andrew, just one of those things that you're really just kind of tying it all together. We're seeing some volume still steadily increasing. As you mentioned, ports are still very full. Are you thinking a lot of this is going to be on the consumer side? Well, it's, it's easy to point that way. And we'll get into some of the data uh, as to why here in one second. So we'll take a look at volumes, uh, as I said, so on a rejection basis, which is just, uh, you know, taking the outbound tender volume index and multiplying it by the inverse of the outbound tender rejection index. So in theory, the outbound tender acceptance index. And so when, when you do that and you account for the, the excess rejections of tenders in our outbound tender volume index, you still have OTVI up roughly 20% year over year. So volumes are very strong on a historical basis. And the West Coast will continue to be a feeder for that freight. And a lot of that is retail consumer freight. And let me show you a little bit of the spending data from Bank of America here. So this is uh, total card spending, and they aggregated it by groups that did receive the stimulus check and by households that did not receive the stimulus check. So there was an immediate impact from the stimulus. Total card spending was up about 20% for the stimulus recipients since January 1st. And when indexed, so you indexed both groups, total card spending for the stimulus recipients is up about 30% over the first five days of the year. So those first stimulus checks began uh, going out on January 1st. We saw an immediate impact to spending there. And the lowest income brackets are the ones having the most impact from these stimulus benefits. Uh, the lowest income tier total card spending was up a stellar 22% year over year in the latest week of data up to January 9th. And this is just evidence that the consumer is managing. Although, you know, given the backdrop, um, you know, given the backdrop of economic uh, the economic backdrop, we have unemployment rising again. We lost 140,000 jobs last week. The, that being said, the, the data is pretty good. So we're going to talk a little bit about what the stimulus money is being spent on, what areas of freight is being moved the most. Uh, so in total, the total card spending accelerated this week up from 2.2% year over year last week to 2.5% year over year this week. I think a lot of that had some stimulus boost to it. Uh, that first stimulus if we look here at this chart, so we've got the 2021 stimulus in blue and the 2020 stimulus back from April in yellow. So the first stimulus was disproportionately spent on online electronics. And I do believe there's been some saturation in the electronics demand. That's why we see not so much of an outsized demand for online electronics with this new benefit. The new stimulus is really being spent on clothing. 
and I think this indicates a bigger trend in 2021 is uh, is a, a reignition of the apparel uh, industry. We saw apparel was down something like 25% in 2020. People had no need to buy clothes uh, because they were staying at home. But I do think that's a big point. And, and overall here is that goods demand is holding up pretty well, given the economic backdrop. Like I said, we lost 140,000 jobs last week. And truly one of the one of the big variables here is the slow vaccine rollout. It is keeping a lid on what I think is going to be a generational uh, generational release of pent up demand for services. The slow rollout is probably kind of a net neutral for freight as a whole. It's keeping a lid on service demand and uh, keeping uh, inducing demand for goods. Got it. And Andrew, uh, as you mentioned, we had a stimulus package that was re released a little bit later on in the latter half of the year going into 2021. Um, do you think further stimulus would really add a significant boost moving forward? Well, if we just look at what this latest stimulus did and what the first stimulus did, it had immediate impacts to spending. And this next proposed stimulus is supposed to be is proposed to be even bigger uh, than the previous two. So, yes, I do think that you'll see a pretty immediate impact to spending. Obviously, the government can't perfectly translate all fourteen hundred dollars that they may give to us into fourteen hundred dollars of of spending. Uh, some of that will go to pay down debts or to uh, or, or to buy other things. But you know, uh, the good thing is, is that a lot of it and a good portion of it is seeing benefits in spending almost immediately after it's released. So on uh, on midday market update yesterday, we discussed Greg Miller, Greg Miller's article on the California container ship jam. Uh, and I made this chart just the other day, and it's comparing the global port tracker, which is the retail import data from Hackett Associates, as well as the National Retail Federation, and then comparing that to uh, retail sales from the Commerce Department. So you can see, uh, you know, a uh, a pretty wide range here in the first half of the year sales and imports were way down the back half of the year sales and imports were way up but if you take the whole year as a whole uh, you still only have retail imports up 1.5 percent year over year while retail sales are up uh, we're up 4.1 percent in november so the port of la is expecting uh, continued demand for imports through the first few months of the year they're they're expecting uh, continual growth in imports uh, over the next few weeks especially and uh, I do believe there's still just major restocking ahead. We, we have, uh, as I said, demand is staying pretty strong given the economic backdrop. And there's still a lot of restocking to do. Uh, the total business inventories are still at its lowest point in five years. So I think even if demand were to slow a little bit, we have this inventory restocking thesis that should keep volumes uh, pumping through the country. So, Andrew, it sounds like a lot of backlog really going to keep things moving forward, even if demand starts to wane. That's what it seems. I mean, I and we also have this blooming industrial recovery happening as well. PMI is at its highest point in two and a half years. We have industrial production picking up as again. That should be you know pushed, especially by the auto market. Uh, they're they're expecting auto production to be up twenty percent year over year in twenty twenty one. It's over easy comps. Yes, twenty twenty was a slow year for production, but it's a good boost. We also have Boeing and the aerospace. Uh, aerospace sector that should get back online with the 737. So there's an industrial uh, growth that that should occur. And I've got one last slide just to take a look at uh, for capacity. Uh, so this is just take, take one last look at the pricing power. So I talked about some of those drivers of demand and how I think freight flows are going to continue being strong. Let's talk a little bit about capacity for a moment. So the so this is just our outbound tender rejection index in blue and then the truck stop van rate per mile uh, spot rate in orange. I mean, it's just been extremely strong in the back half of the year in the last six months. I do expect to see this uh, tender rejection rate continue to to fall down a little bit. I don't expect us to get anywhere near uh, last uh, the beginning of last year or even the end of 2019. But uh, I think that we're going to see rejection rates come down as bid season progresses, as carriers bid up those contract rates closer to spot rates. We probably see some downward pressure on spot rates and some downward pressure on contract on, on rejection rates. But that doesn't mean that the environment is loosening. Rather, it's just a, still a tight environment, but carriers are being rewarded and, and are being paid a, a higher price for their tight capacity. So carriers are still in a really good position uh, up on or the uh, DHL supply. DHL supply chain pricing power index stays at 70 this week, poised to go higher in the coming weeks. So just that, Andrew, speaking of expectations, you expect the DHL PPI to move upward in the next couple of weeks? Well, I definitely expect it to not go down. Uh, I expect carriers to stay pretty strong. We have a lot of capacity that should be added to the market, or rather a lot of equipment that should be added to the market uh, in the middle of the year and towards the back end of the year. But we still have a lot of bottlenecks on the driver side. We're seeing that with rising wages uh, and, and wage inflation. So 
even if they get all that equipment, it's still going to be pretty difficult to get people in the truck. So I do expect capacity to stay fairly tight and contract rates to go up. And, uh, and I expect the pricing power to stay in the hands of the carriers. I think our three month outlook is at 75 right now. Uh, so imagine that, uh, you know, that's a lot of that is going to be depend dependent on the vaccine rollout, how many million Americans are vaccinated by that point. President Biden has set a goal for 100 million in the first 100 days. I'm skeptical uh, given the slow vaccine rollout so far, but if they can really get that, min that many, then we should see a lot of spending being shifted back towards services uh, and people fe feeling free to go out and spend money on services. Skepticism definitely well-deserved. Andrew, this is insightful. As always, where can people find more information? So you can go to Freightwaves slash uh, you can go to Freightwaves slash communities to sign up for any of our retail uh, supply chain or CPG or automotive uh, newsletters that we write. I write the point of sale, which is for the retail community. You can always go to Freightwaves.com slash passport for all of the research from the passport team. Seth Holm, Hunter, Carol, and Tony Mulvey are pumping out good stuff every week. Excellent. Andrew, thank you so much. And thank you so much for tuning in. That's going to wrap it up for this Friday edition of the DHL Supply Chain Pricing Power Index Update. Be sure to tune in next week for all the latest.